Hey, bitch. Welcome back to the podcast. Honestly, I can't even say welcome back to a certain name of the podcast. I don't fucking know what the name of this damn podcast is. I've changed it three times. If you've listened to the first episode, it was an open book. And then if you listen to it, the episode after, it's called Ramble. Or the third episode. And then the new video I just put out is called Ramble too. But I don't like Ramble because everyone... Not everyone. But I'm just like, that's not original... And that doesn't showcase me. So I'm probably going to change the name again. I don't know to what, but it's definitely going to be by the time this one comes out. I tried recording. Oh my God, I'm being so fucking loud. I tried recording a podcast episode like right before this. I got six minutes in and I just fucking hated it. Um, what was I, I going to talk about instead? Oh, adulting is fucking cringe. Sorry, I was listening to Denzel and Ricky's podcast. I was like getting an argument, not an argument. Um, They sparked a conversation in my head to myself of like adulting. First of all, I fucking hate it. And I'm gonna not, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tell you why. So I just finished an audiobook called The Mountain Is You. I highly recommend that shit. Um... It's making me think a lot differently and it's making me challenge a lot of my beliefs. And that shit comes with fucking adulting. Also, it just comes with being a human in the first place. If you're not going to put the work into yourself, the fuck are you doing? This book that I read, The Mountain Is You, is making me question like everything. And it talks about inner child and shit like that. And I was like, oh my god, inner child? Like, girl, I'm an adult. I keep forgetting that. Like, so many times in the past week, maybe two weeks, I like just like literally what is not tunnel vision but i just everything zooms out and i'm like fuck i'm like 20 years old i live by myself and i'm paying bills like even right now like a a chill just ran down my spine that's fucking nasty that's disgusting that's cringe like ew i'm literally paying bills i have a a job like Everyone has a fucking job, but, like, I have a job that I I have to work for to pay bills and to, like, buy my own groceries and shit like that. Like, I don't know. That shit's cringe. So then I just started thinking about adulting in general, and it's fucking gross. Like, bitch, I have to get health insurance in a couple years. Health insurance. Are Are you fucking with me? And then on top of that, people are gonna start getting married, like... In a couple years. Huh? Huh? Excuse me? Like, girl, I had one relationship. And bitches around me are gonna start getting married soon. Like, what the fuck? Honestly, I think what's so weird for me of this whole adulting thing. And I put adulting in quotes if you're watching the video. I'm putting adulting in quotes because I think adulting and maturing are kind of two separate things. I feel like when people think of adulting, they think of the physical, tangible things. Like, I'm gonna get my own apartment. I'm gonna start paying bills. I'm gonna live alone. Like, that's all tangible things. But, like, maturing is, like, intangible things because it's, like, conscious. Like, you're, like... or It's conscious and subconscious because you're doing things to improve who you are as a person that is solely... Or that's not exclusively physical. You know what I mean? Like, maturing, yeah, you can physically mature your body. Girl, I think I'm done growing. I'm fucking 5'6". I'm 5'6", and I haven't grown a fucking inch since, like, when was it? Sophomore year of high school. Um, But I've been, like, having so many... uh, What I say? Tests, dare I say? I don't know. But I've come to many situations where I'm like, wait, do I continue to act like i used to after listening to this book it was talking about how a lot of our reactions and shit is defense mechanisms we implemented as a kid and i was like girl as a kid i was an insecure little boy like i was an insecure little boy that craved attention and so then i was like girl am i doing that now uh weird and it just makes it's making me want to question everything about my life and honestly it's uncomfortable and exhausting even talking about this right now girl i want to start crying like i don't know why but i'm like so uncomfortable (laughs) right now 
Um, even though it's just me and a fucking box with a lens looking at me, like, girl. So, on the topic of that uncomfortable feeling, I was talking about it in therapy, and I was listening to it in the book, and it was just saying, like, when you're at these uncomfortable things, uh, especially when it comes to challenging your beliefs and learning um, about new things about yourself, and when you want to react differently and shit, like, that uncomfortable feeling, like, means you're growing. So it kind of is, like, comforting. But boy, do I hate it. Today, I've stayed in the whole day. Like, I came home really early from my friend's apartment the other night. And I don't feel like doing anything today. Like, I'm choosing to stay in my bed and do absolutely nothing. And it kind of makes me feel gross because I usually like to get out. Ugh. It's this whole adulting shit, like, girl, I'm halfway done college. What the fuck am I gonna do with a degree? The fuck? You're gonna make me look like the Incredibles dad at the damn cubicles with a suit and tie tapping on a fucking computer from nine to five? Like, ew. Oh my god, I can literally cry thinking about it. I was writing about this um, the other day. I had my, like, this is why I'm always like, girl, I didn't think I'd make it this far. Because, one, I had my life planned up until 18. I didn't know what the fuck I was gonna, bitch, 20 years old? I did not know what the fuck I was gonna do at 20 years old. I don't even want to be in college. I didn't even think about going to damn college. I didn't think I'd be living here. God, did I not think I'd be living here. I didn't, I do not want to be living here. Girl, I want to be sitting at home, running downstairs, seeing my mom, screaming, and then going back to my room and pretending nothing happened. Like, I miss being a kid. Even saying that, I'm like, girl, when I look in the mirror, I always think I'm like 13 still. But that was seven, oh my God, that's so cringe. That was seven fucking years ago. And that's disgusting. That's gross. Like, and also, okay, here's another thing. Okay, wait, honestly, I, I like that I'm talking about this now. Fucking sometimes when I'm, uh, I'm faced with a situation and I'm like choosing what I'm going to react to and how I'm going to react. Girl, this may be controversial, but sometimes I just want to act as if I'm fucking 17. Like, girl, I want to throw a temper tantrum and then fucking yell at you. Like, ugh. And now that I'm 20 years old, it's like so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable because even when I was talking with my little sister, I was like making an assumption about we were making us we were ordering smoothies and like I made an assumption about her or something and she called me out. Like she cleared me. I was fucking floored. She was like, "Are you assuming?" And I was like I I was gagged. I was like, "Oh my god." Wait, I was, huh? Like, I was reacting like a fucking 17-year-old. So then I was like, what am I going to do next? Like, she called me out, and I was like, you know, I guess I'll apologize, like, and say, like, oh, my gosh, thanks for, like, calling me out and shit like that. And I did, and I was like, that was really fucking uncomfortable. Like, I'm literally faced with situations where I'm like, I have to react differently. But it's like, it's like, you know, when those movie scenes where people are pulling both sides of, like, they're fighting over the boy, and then... They're, like, pulling him from both sides. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're pulling his arm on both sides, like, trying to, like, tug of fucking war. Like, it feels like I'm in the middle of tug of war. And either the unhealed and childish side of myself wants to take over or the matured version wants to take over. And I'm like, girl, sometimes I want to just scream and run away. But I, like, shouldn't be doing that because I'm 20 years old. Ew, I, like, I'm going to puke when I think about that sometimes. Like, sometimes I just want to, like, live carefree and shit. Like, obviously, I live carefree. I don't give a fuck about some shit. Um, but other times, I, like, have to, like, actually think, like, oh, my God, what is this going to mean for the future? Whereas I was, okay, there's the word, careless. I was making lots of careless mistakes. Um, not mistakes, careless decisions when I was a teenager, which was only a year ago. I've been nine or I've been 20 for three months. And it's fucking gross. When I tell you I did not think I'd make it this far, like girl, 20, twe, like 21, 22. That's disgusting. Like, I'm excited, but I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. And Loki, this shit's scary. Like, there's no manual. As many podcasts and shit I listen to, literally, a lot of my coworkers are, like, within my age range. A lot of them are a, lot, a little bit older than me, and I always ask them. I'm like, are your 20s scary? Because, girl, I can't fucking ask my mom or my dad. They live in a fucking different country. 
They don't even know what mental health illness was. They literally, like, they literally lived a whole completely different life. So I can't ask them, like, mom, dad, what were your 20s like? Because it's fucking different. Like, I'm going to go through different experiences. So that's what's so fucking scary is I don't know what to expect. And I'm scared. Like, I'm scared, but I'm excited. I'm just uncomfortable. Like, I'm so uncomfortable. I don't know what the fuck to do. Like, even today, I'm like, girl, should I be looking for, like, an internship or something? Like, should I be networking? Ew! Like, I don't... Oh, my God. It's, like, so cringe. Like, I don't want to be an adult. And I think that that resistance is what's, like, so uncomfortable. Because one thing I've learned is if you resist change... Because, girl, we're human. Shit is changing every fucking day. Like... Every fuck. Look at where we were 100 years ago. And look at where we are now. Even where I was two years ago to where I am now, I was living in the dorms, having fun, kikiing with my friends. And now I live alone and only hang out with myself. So that's cool. I choose to hang out with myself, though. See, it's so weird. Like, and I feel like a lot of people think that having a mature reaction is just like not reacting at all. Which I'm like, girl, I've met too many people that think that way. That's called suppression. Or at least from what I've experienced seeing it, when people don't like let themselves get angry or let themselves feel sad or let themselves be like rageful, or is that the word? Like feel rage. Like even me, like I'd be doing that shit too. Like literally sometimes I don't let myself feel sad because that shit sucks. Like, that shit sucks, and it's uncomfortable feeling your fucking emotions. But, like, honestly, let's do it together. Because some people don't like to feel their emotions or talk about their emotions. And look at where the fuck that gets them. They blow up on the wrong fucking person, say the wrong fucking things, and then regret it later. Guess what? That could have been avoided if you just talked about it. And I'm calling myself out, too. Like, I mean, sometimes I still do it. But I've gotten better at it, you know? When I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling angry, I usually go to the gym. Um, or I write it down, or I talk about it, because I fucking love talking. Maybe I'll call this talk a lot, this show. Talk a lot, I talk a lot, talkative, I don't fucking know. But besides, the, that's back to the point. Um, it's fucking uncomfortable. And that whole thing about resisting change, girl, oh my God, don't resist it. I'm like literally telling you, as someone who's been forced to change almost every three months, don't fucking resist that, girl. An example is there was this situation where I wasn't sure if I should be with some people and I just kept on questioning it. Then it just all came out of nowhere where every single night, every single morning, it was just like, oh God, I should be leaving, huh? Or like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. Like, I literally started like going, I started, I felt fucking crazy because I was like, oh my God, it feels like something is trying to speed this shit up. Like literally the flash grabbed me and is running 5,000 miles an hour forward into the future. And I'm just like, damn, so I avoided this too long, huh? Probably should have not resisted that. It's weird because when I was little, ew, I can't even say that. I've only been on this planet for two decades. When I was younger, I wouldn't really resist change, especially when it came to people coming in and out of my life or, like, new places that I wanted to go. I love to fucking do things. My sister would always say, like, John, every time you leave the house, you come with something new. Like, you come back with something every single fucking time. One time I came back with a plant. The next day I came back with a mirror. And then the day after, I think I came back with a spray bottle. The fuck? Like, I just, like, like to do new things. But when it comes to major life shifts, girl, this shit's uncomfortable. Like, when I'm telling you, I like to think of life like Super Mario Bros. Like, when you get better at the level before, you go on to the next level and it's a little bit harder. Like, it's just so uncomfortable, though, because you get stressed out because you can't pass the level on the first try sometimes. Or it's not as easy. You have to, like, learn from your mistakes, from, like, oh, you got hit by that fucking fireball or the, the Tootsie Roll-looking dude. So now you know for next time. It's just, like, adulting is so gross. But I'm going to give you guys some, um, like, lessons that I've learned. Because, honestly, I think it'll be useful. Take what you will. I've learned that you can tell people things a lot, but... 
it comes to them if they um want to fucking change or not so one can we start being a little bit more honest i've been telling myself this too like if you don't want to do something if you don't want to hang out with someone just fucking tell them if you don't want to if you don't want to if you think that or if you feel that this is making you uncomfortable just fucking tell someone you're self-sabotaging that's another thing that i've been learning about in this book called the mountain is you like self-sabotage that shit's crazy it's all unconscious sometimes we think we're not deserving of love or of reward or of success where we just start to sabotage uh, we start to self-sabotage ourselves and that's why we're not going anywhere and it's like ew so be honest with people and yourself oh girl being honest with myself is actually so uncomfortable when i'm like oh my god like you got to put your ego aside for a second let's go back to when i was talking to my sister about them damn smoothies like last year i would have been like Girl, no, you're assuming. The fuck are you telling me I'm assuming for? You're the one fucking assuming and you're trying to make me seem like the bad guy. Like projecting my insecurity onto her that the fact that she's right by making her seem wrong. Like gaslighting her, whatever the fuck. But this time I was like, oh my God, am I assuming? And that shit was uncomfortable because I had to be honest with myself. I was like, oh my God, Miss Girl is like younger than me and she's really clearing me right now saying that I'm assuming. Like that shit was like a rude awakening it really makes you put your ego aside because me i'm a fire sign girl and not to be like an astrological bitch but like i like to think i'm right all the time because some of the times i am not all of the time some of the times i am right so i like to think i am they talked about that in the book too psychic thinking when you think that a gut feeling is always right and it like makes you try to predict the future and shit i'm trying to fix that i just finished that chapter today I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to be a know-it-all. Ew. Like, let's be honest. We don't know shit. Like, we don't know shit. Like, I don't know the fuck to- I'm gonna- I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do tomorrow. I know I'm working. But what am I gonna do after 2 p.m.? Like, what- like, who knows? Maybe I'll fucking run into a celebrity. Or maybe I will buy food. I don't know. Like, I don't know the fuck I'm gonna do tomorrow. So I gotta stop being a know-it-all. And that starts with being honest with myself of, like, when I'm wrong. And that shit sucks. Uh, Like, that shit's uncomfortable. And me, I overthink everything. Normally, I always think I'm... Not always, but normally, sometimes I'm like, oh, am I wrong? Am I right? Like, I can see it from other people's perspectives. But at the end of the day, if I'm being honest with myself, I like to think I'm right. Because I hate being wrong. No one wants to be fucking wrong. That shit sucks. Like, having to admit to yourself that you're wrong and that the other person is right? Girl, ew. But vulnerability is power. So like admitting that you're wrong, respect, also being honest with people. I've been honest with people for the most part. Like girl, I will tell you when you're being annoying. I will tell you, oh, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. And honestly, I like when people challenge my beliefs sometimes, although I can be a bitch about it. Oh my God. I I still like when people challenge my beliefs because it's just like, oh, you might be protecting me from a certain thing. What's another one besides being honest with yourself? Take time for yourself. Adulting is so fucking hard hard it's difficult it's a challenge like girl this is a challenge um and not like those 2012 cinnamon challenge what's in my mouth challenge shit where it's like like, girl this is hard i was even talking to my sister about it she's in grad school she be struggling too like you don't know what the fuck other people are going through like shit is like hard so like give yourself time to just breathe that's what i'm doing today girl i'm i like that i'm talking into the camera because i who else am i gonna talk to right now i can call someone but i just felt inclined to share another one this is a big one for me is that nobody fucking cares people are really concerned with themselves i know i am (laughs) <laughs> like not in a self-absorbed way when i'm on the train i saw this girl across from me like pull out of a, like a mirror from her purse and just started like fixing her hair and then i saw myself and i was doing the same exact thing i pulled out my phone and i was just fixing my hair and i'm like damn no one here gives a fuck about what i'm doing and i think that's a good like a good thing i got out of living in new york is that since there are so many people here no one fucking cares you it's very rare to see a person twice um in passing i've only had that interaction once with um someone that actually like follows me shout out to you girl i saw her twice consecutively and i was like oh my god hey but it's very rare to see people all the time so it's just like i'm gonna do the fuck i want and i have to get better at this if i'm being honest with myself using point number one nobody fucking cares about what you do and if they do care girl they're insecure why do they care so much about what you're doing they're probably jealous why are you concerned so bad like 
you want to fuck that bad just say so it's embarrassing no one's concerned with you as much as you think so stop thinking the world revolves around you <laughs> um let's think of another one keep close the people that you feel fulfilled from that's a big one wow i have been hearing a lot of like my cousins also on this like self healing journey we literally were talking about how we cut off like a lot of people here's a question i'm gonna ask you when you hang out with people how do you feel after the interaction do you feel drained or light and i know i know you already answered that quick when i think of interactions i have with people it's like oh that was fun <laughs> like it was like oh that was fun but at the same time i feel really exhausted and not like physically exhausted i mean like emotionally and mentally like do you feel like you got something out of it do you feel like it's good for you like having a conversation like i know the difference girl i would hang out with people and i would leave feeling gross like i want to take a shower like if there was bugs crawling all over me like i felt like really shit and it was probably because i didn't like the person i was around them you know what i mean i was faking a persona sometimes or i felt the need to start acting the way they did to feel seen and that's unfulfilling and that's draining on the opposite side i have also left um, interactions feeling very fulfilled with people because i'm like oh my god wait i feel so light like light as a feather so that one is a big one and kind of segueing into this other point you need to be careful who you choose to put your time into i could do this whole episode on this one i'm probably gonna do a whole episode about like you are who you surround yourself with i tried recording that one but i didn't like how it sounded but it's really true i've seen it for the better and the worse for example like when i surround myself with my family a lot we're very up uplifting to one another on the opposite side i've seen people in my life surround themselves with very i, I don't know if superficial is the word the right word to use for it but like very surface level friends very surface level interactions and then they bring that shit onto me and i'm like sorry bye like i don't want to be near that like it's just like people forget that their personalities really start to become the people who's around them. Because think about it, when you're around people for so often, you start to develop like their mannerisms and the things they say, like things they laugh at, you start to find things they find funny, funny. But that's like not you, you know what I mean? Do you even like those people? Because girl, when I tell you I dropped people that I didn't like who I was becoming around, I didn't, I mean, that's nothing wrong with them. It's just like, you guys are separate people from me and you're doing your own thing. I'm doing my own thing and I don't like that mix, you know what I mean? But I'll see you every now and again. Let's let's kiki, let's get dinner, let's get lunch. So really be careful of who you put your time into and who you surround yourself with. Thinking about who I was with this friend group, who I was with that friend group, it was eh. I'm trying to think of other like, like crucial life lessons i've learned as a as an adult or like in my 20 years of fucking living because adulting is fucking gross i'll end off in this one because it kind of wraps like childhood and adulthood together with a pretty fucking bow but the golden rule like that shit that we learn as kids like treat people how you want to be treated like can we please start doing that it's really true like even in an energetical standpoint like if you're putting out negative energy that's all you're gonna get back. But if you put out positive energy and are treating people with respect and kindness, then that's what you're gonna get back. Like the other day, I complimented someone's outfit. I was like, girl, I really like your outfit. And she was like, thanks. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to put like, give people more compliments. Like when I like look to my friend and she was like, you did a great job. I'm like, oh my God, thanks. Even just like sparking conversations like at Trader Joe's. I was talking to the girl about this bag that I wanted. And then the next time I came, she was like, yes, rep that Trader Joe's bag. And I was like, wait, that was so cute. Like that was so sweet. And then the time I came before, the worker was like, you're smile like really brightened my day that stuff i love that stuff about being human is that even though our interactions can be so eh, like and aggressive sometimes our interactions can be so beautiful as well when i put out good energy it like feels nice honestly like it's like oh i'm putting out good vibes into the earth and then I, it's just like you know you're gonna get them back not instantly but you'll get them back don't do it for the sole purpose of getting a reward because then it's not authentic then it's just like for show and for fakes i just felt inclined to talk about that so if you guys enjoyed this episode give it a follow give it a like adulting is is challenging i'm working through it i've only been like a full adult for like two years but i think adulting started now for me if any of y'all are adults like 
20-ish years old. Talk to me about it. What is stuff that you've learned? I want this to be a little community thing. In my comments, let me know what you guys have learned. Or if shit doesn't stick with you. If you want to challenge my belief, girl, fucking challenge it. I'm open to learning new things. These were just my opinions, though. Or things that I've learned in life. So, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this episode, yay! I'm glad. And also, give it a thumbs up Um, if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're listening to it on Spotify, share it. I definitely think you should share it with a friend if they need it or if you think that they would to like to listen that'd be cool follow my socials i guess and, oh wait you know what the last thing i think i'm gonna end off with is just being you doing things for you i made that my new bio do it for you because who the fuck else are you gonna do it for unless you got kids sometimes i do shit for my my family just because i'm like oh i want to make them proud for that but most of the time i'm doing it for me like girl i'm gonna be selfish about that stuff working on myself for me i'm not working on myself for no one like imagine saying that like you're doing all this inner work in the hopes of getting someone no it, it'll they'll come to you you should do all this for yourself though well that's the end of this pod episode i hope you guys enjoyed and yeah i'll see you next thursday i think when i'm posting this i don't fucking know see you guys soon bye